So you're looking to figure out what program is going to be the best for your streaming experience? Well, today we're comparing three different ones, Twitch Studio, OBS, and Streamlabs OBS. Let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you for stopping by. I'm Cyrus, and I'm here to improve the streaming experience not only for you, but also for your viewers. If you enjoy the video, make sure to go ahead and subscribe, like the video, and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss content like this one. Also, check me out on Twitch. I stream three days a week. I would love for you to be a part of that. And join the Darkness Discord. The link for that's in the description. With that out of the way, let's talk about how we can improve your streaming experience by just getting you in the door with the right program that fits your needs. And at the end, I'll give you my recommendations, what I feel is the best setup that's going to keep you lasting all the way through as you transition into affiliate and into partner. So let's jump into that and I'll show you each program and the benefits and the cons of each. Let's go over there. First up is Twitch Studio. This one's very platform dependent because it is to Twitch, except that this is one of the most popular streaming platforms so if you're not using Twitch, go ahead and use the timestamp and skip forward to OBS or Streamlabs OBS. But let's talk about Twitch Studio. To get Twitch Studio, either click the link in the description or head over to twitch.tv, click on your profile and go to Creator Dashboard. On the left, you'll see Streaming Tools, and this is where you can download the three that we're actually talking about today, but this is where you can get Twitch Studio, the beta version. So once you click Download and install it, you'll open it up and it'll give you an option to go ahead and sign in, or it'll even have you signed in already to get a key from Twitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in and then take you over to that point. And once you've signed in, you should get to a screen like this that says, Welcome to Twitch Studio. You can skip the setup and go ahead and go through things, but I'm gonna click Get Started. I'm gonna let it go ahead and see a few things. As you can see, it's picking up my microphone right here. I'm gonna continue to webcam. It's not going to see my webcam because I'm currently actually using it on another source. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and click Continue to Screens and it'll give me a few options that I want to have like my main screen which is where I'm going to be doing my live which is the background or my display as well as my webcam my be right back and then a chatting screen I'm gonna go ahead and click continue to settings it's recommending that I run 1080p 60 based upon my bitrate I don't recommend this and if you want to know about all of this I'll do another video that talks about bitrate but I would actually suggest if you're going to be starting off on Twitch go ahead and stream 720p 60 or 720-30 and back your bitrate down you might not get encoding every single time you stream or transcoding rather you might not get transcoding which means the people that are watching you might not be able to watch the high bitrate you're sending so if you're gonna run 720-60 I recommend 3500 to 4500 if you're going to run 720-30, which is probably what I would recommend for new streamers, I would say 2500 or so. Uh, run NVENC and don't run a stream delay. If you have NVENC, that is. If you run an AMD card, run AMF. If you don't have either one, run X264. And we're going to let this be what it is and click Done. Now, we're going to be on the screen. It's going to ask you a whole bunch of stuff new for you. Slide into your scenes, etc., etc., etc. All of yours could look slightly different. But I'm going to go ahead and make mine large screen and you can see on the left you have your different scenes that you can click between like your main scene your be right back scene and your chatting and you can add a whole bunch of things in here that you might need or might not need this is a pretty easy way to see kind of what your twitch dashboard is except that you're actually controlling your stream to twitch from here so let's do a couple of things and edit a scene just so that you can see how powerful this program can be all right so on our main scene i'm going to click edit scene at the bottom and it's going to give you an option to where i can do game capture webcam Wall, wallpaper etc what I'm going to do is actually add a layer and I'm going to click main screen share I'm going to click add I'm going to let that be what it is I'm just going to call this um, display capture that's what most of the programs actually call it is display capture and I can't really choose anything specific but I can actually go click on the right to say full screen application screen share source and I can choose the entire screen or I can choose a specific individual window. I'm going to click entire screen and as you can see I've created this beautiful effect of it screen sharing things way too many times. So for me right now I'm just going to click the actual dashboard that I had pulled up earlier and you can see that it's now window captured onto that. If you had a webcam this is where you could click change or refresh device, choose your webcam, accept it, go for it and it'll pull it up. Like I said my webcam is being used obviously to record this video but normally it would pop up right there. Any of the actual settings that you have is just below that. So if you wanted to deactivate one not selected, you wanted a chroma key, color filter, all of those options will be on the right side after you click that specific one. 
Now, after you're done, you'll click save, and then you can actually click start stream or record video directly from this app. A little bit of testing that I've done with this app, it doesn't use a lot of CPU usage, but it does use a little more than OBS. So um, compared to Streamlabs OBS, this and Twitch Studio, I think Twitch Studio falls about halfway in between OBS and Streamlabs OBS. Uh, this program is actually very powerful and I would recommend it to people who are just starting out. It's an easy way to get things edited up and going real quick, connect straight to Twitch, but that's your limitation is the fact that it is Twitch only and it doesn't actually go to something like YouTube or if it does I have yet to figure that out and maybe you can if you can drop down in the comments and tell me if it goes to another thing like we can stream to YouTube or to Facebook gaming or Periscope or whatever the case all right next up is Streamlabs OBS this one you can actually find again the link will be in the description but on the Streamlabs website you'll see it download Streamlabs and when you download and install it it'll look something like this after you get it going one of the things I wanted to tell you about this one is this is an all-inclusive program not only does it include your alerts and also your, you can get overlays and theme packs and stuff from it, but it kind of keeps it all in a, like a nice, neat program. So on the left, you can click, uh, I think this is themes on the left. Right now we're looking at yeah, different themes that we can choose. I have Streamlabs Prime, so I can choose all of the um, ones that are actually Streamlabs Prime, but there are many of these that are free. If you type free in here, there is an entire library of free theme packs that are already set up in scenes like for example here's one that's called explosive red and it has a stream starting soon screen a be right back screen but all these can be edited you can change be right back to just chatting any of that you have full customization over a lot of these so there's 13 pages of just three things here there's also some apps you can use that automatically can connect again some of these are free some of these are not free i would make sure you go through here and look at them streamlabs prime is 20 bucks a month and that can be expensive, but it does come with a lot of really cool features that you can use for your stream and also for a website, which is mainly why I have it. So if we go back down to the actual editor, it looks very similar to OBS in the fact that you have your sources, your scenes down here, your sources in your mixer, as well as a mini feed. And if you don't like the way this is set up or you're rocking a vertical monitor, you can click out the layout editor and change any of these and choose any of the other options and drag them into the location that you like. So um, another part of it is it does have an integrated chat window that will be there connected to your stream chat and you'll be able to do all the things that you would on any of the other programs by adding sources, etc. Um, once you have an alert, like for example, if I click alerts, you can see you have bits, donations, merch, and a whole bunch of stuff that you can add and edit here on this actual platform without having to go use a third party platform and then import them. You can do everything through Streamlabs OBS and test them. Like if I click follow, you'll even see that it tested up there and you can see it on the screen. Uh, and I mean, that's pretty much it. Streamlabs OBS is kind of a crazy program. And if you want a really more in-depth in tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description that I did. It's like a 30 minute tutorial where I walk from download to hitting go uh, for start stream, not go to on this platform. Go ahead and check that out. I'll even put a card up in the corner. And uh, I think that's pretty much with Streamlabs OBS. There's a lot here, a lot of things to consider. There's a couple settings that I'll just go ahead and tell you if you do get this one. A couple things make sure you go to output change your output to advanced and under streaming make sure you change your encoder to the right encoder that works for you if you have an amd card go amf if you have a nvidia card go nvinc i would definitely leave it as constant bitrate make sure your keyframe is two and then make sure your bitrate matches your resolution again like i said if you're going to just start out and you're going to do 720p I would say 72030 and, and about 2500 bitrate to 3000 bitrate is pretty good. Um, but everyone has a difference of opinion on this. And depending on what you're playing, you could want more bitrate or more or less bitrate. Some people want to jump straight for that 1080p 60 and think, man, I want to have my one viewer looking at the best stream in the world, except the fact that Twitch doesn't support transcoding to all of its people. So some people not, might not be able to watch 6000 bitrate and you're alienating your audience. So with that being said, make sure you match your bit rates to your resolution, um, et cetera. That'd be awesome. The one thing I want to tell you that you do need to click is click on advanced, scroll to the bottom and check under network, dynamically change bit rate when dropping frames. This one setting 
has saved me from dropping frames through my streams. Don't know why. I don't know exactly what it means. Not, not that I don't know what it means. It actually means that when it's really highly congested on the Twitch servers, it'll go ahead and adjust the quality slightly so you don't drop frames. I just don't know how it does it all the time because there's no showing like a bar of how much it does it or how much it pulls the quality. I can tell you from my experience, I don't see the quality move that much, but this setting, I'm telling you, will save a lot of your stream from dropping frames. So check that. Don't turn on low latency mode. Uh, ugh. And let's talk about the pros and cons of Streamlabs OBS. Yes, it is an all-encompassing program, except the fact that this program does use a lot of CPU power. You can right click on the screen and click enable performance mode and it kind of takes away the faders from the mixer and then pulls away the actual video on the screen and that can help but it still uses a decent amount of CPU resources and I feel like I read a while back of people having memory leaks. I didn't really have that except that I've kind of experienced some stutters with Streamlabs OBS. I don't recommend it to be long-term use. If you're just getting started, this is a great program, but we'll talk about that when we wrap up on the final kind of synopsis of this. All right, so let's jump over to OBS and we'll talk about that program next. And last on this list is OBS or Open Broadcast Software. And you can find it at obsproject.com or again, click the link in the description. What I wanna tell you is that OBS Studio is completely open source. And that's why Streamlabs OBS actually exists. Streamlabs uses the source code and integrates their stuff inside it. But OBS Studio is the most up-to-date version, obviously, of OBS, and Streamlabs OBS kind of lacks on implementing all of the brand new stuff that comes out in the actual open source version of this program. So make sure you download it, install it, etc. All right, so what you're looking at now is OBS, and it's kind of set up weird because I have it on a vertical monitor to this side, but this is my main screen that I'm looking at right now. And one of the important things with this platform is that it's so customizable. You can add so many extensions, user created extensions that are very unique. And like, for example, one that I have is the move transition uh, that allows me to switch in between the two uh, scenes with some really cool animation. Uh, what you saw there is as it moves, it moves my web camera without actually just fading apart. Um, if I put my browser source in, like for example, this is my stream elements uh, overlay that's here. This is what people will see. And when I go to live, you'll see that it'll actually move away as I go into the next one. So one of the cool things about this program is how customizable it is, but also how it links and connects to so many platforms. Like for example, the Stream Deck, just so does all the other platforms we have, but there are third party Stream Deck alternatives that are free that will link to OBS, but not to any of the other source platforms like Twitch Studio or Streamlabs OBS. So this platform makes it very universal to streamers, except that there's a little bit more setup that has to go into it and it might look a little daunting at first because it doesn't really hold your hand. Now there is a setup, I can't remember where exactly it is, but you can go through here and actually get it to kind of show you how to get started or something, um, or at least run it to where it'll get you your right bit rate. I don't really know how to find that because when I first downloaded it, it was just kind of click and go, figure out what you're doing, kind of fail as you learn. But uh, one of the things with OBS is how universal it is and how much you can make it work for you. So with that being known, let me talk about my recommendations for what program you should be using and kind of tell you the things why I don't think you should use the other platforms. So let's jump into that. So what is my recommendation? Well, I've got a twofold answer here and it's just because of the situation. Number one, my recommendation to you is using OBS, the original OBS, not Streamlabs, but the original one, because you can make it however you want, completely customize it, add in new features, extensions, docs in different places. I just think that platform has so much more customization for you to be successful. However, if you're a first time streamer, you still are trying to learn everything and you think that that's going to be confusing to get started, my recommendation is, especially if you're using Twitch, Go use Twitch Studio. When I was messing with it and trying to learn how to use it, it took me almost no time to get everything in that I needed to get on the screen. And all I had to do was just look like it literally led me in the direction of putting everything where I wanted it. And since it's already connected to Twitch, everything is nice and clean. It looks like the Twitch dashboard. When I hit stream, 
it literally makes me feel like I'm a part of the Twitch platform because it's a part of Twitch Studio. And I know that sounds dumb and probably a little weird, but it, it just felt natural. Now, the last program, which is Streamlabs OBS, the only reason I'm not pushing that program is I feel like it uses too much system resources for someone who's on a single PC setup, which most people who start are. And when it comes to gaming, I feel like it really hits performance of your computer to the point where you're dropping frames or you're losing a little bit of that gaming ability because it's pulling those resources. Now, you're going to roast me in the comments. Somebody's going to do it. I already know that. Please do, because I know that there are people who use this all the time. There are professionals, all these streamers that are way up there and have all of this money. They have all these viewers who still use that platform. And that's great. I'm talking to you from the small channel. You just started out. You might not have the best computer. You might still be rocking a laptop. I feel like Streamlabs OBS uses too much resources for a beginning streamer. I recommend Twitch Studio for someone who's just getting in the game. If you're wanting to use something that's going to be longevity, go to OBS. You can kind of customize how much it's going to use. So those are my recommendations. Go ahead and take them with a grain of salt. Take something from it. If you have any questions, please jump in the comments. I would love to be able to answer you. Come jump into Discord. I would love to be able to connect with you and maybe answer your questions, help you set things up if you need. And I think that's probably going to wrap this video up. Check me out on Twitch. I'd love to see you in chat. And uh, if you like the video, hit it with a thumbs up, sub, all that stuff. Yeah. And I think that's where we'll wrap it up. Guys, I'm Cyrus and welcome to the darkness. We'll catch you next time.